Okay, we've seen the waves in the swimming pool in the video where it sloshes out towards the outside, comes to a stop, and then goes back in and forms a big wave in the middle. If this is the edge of our flexible swimming pool, and this is the wave out towards the edge, which has now more or less come to a stop, then it's not a bad guess to say that this is probably stationary fluid and we can apply the fluid statics rules to it. Now, we've seen the view from up here, and what those waves look like. We'd like to see what's happening inside the pool from down below. So we need to put a window in it. If we put a window in there, that window has to be strong enough to withstand the pressure. And so when we're designing this window, which is going to be on a hinge down here and swing out like this, we need to account for the pressure forces acting on the window, some kind of a force holding it back in here, and the details, we're going to need a gasket in there to somehow provide some sealing. But let's ignore those gasketing forces. Let's assume we can get that seal. But just how hard are we going to have to push up here to hold it in? And what's the force acting on the hinge so that we can design that hinge? Now, to make the problem a little more complicated, I've made the window into this trapezoidal shape. I'd like to make an argument that I need this larger portion of it up here to be able to get a wider view of the area up near the surface. But mostly I just did it to make the problem harder so that you can see some of the ideas of the integration. I put some dimensions on here. The pool's about two meters up to the rim once the rim sort of stretches out and up like this. And the bottom of the whole assembly is a quarter of a meter above the ground. I've got to get down here with my camera. The top of the assembly is a quarter of a meter plus a little edge here for the flange, about five centimeters, another about five centimeters up here, and the height of the window is 0.6 meters. So this is a pretty big window. It's about half a meter wide at the top, 0.3 meters wide at the bottom, and about 0.6 meters high. So it's about a quarter of a square meter here. And I just marked on the other dimensions for the frame around it. So we'd like to figure out how big is that force, how big is the force down here on the hinge, and design our window accordingly. So if we want to design a window to fit into this pool to account for this pressure force and that force holding it up with this hinge here allowing it to fold down, then we need to set up a framework to work in. I'm going to choose this location for my y-axis with y equal to zero right at the bottom of the window because that's easiest for me, or at least I think it's going to be the easiest for me. If I'm looking at the pressure, the pressure is going to be the same for all locations on the window at the same y because they'll be the same distance under the water. So the pressure will be the same all the way across in this little incremental area here. So I can do my two-dimensional integration over the area just by doing a one-dimensional integration in Y and allowing for the fact that this little area is going to be narrower at the bottom, wider at the top, and it's going to vary linearly in between. So my incremental area dA will be equal to W dY, where W is the width across the window at this point. So when I move down here to look at a force balance on the window assembly, there's going to be the hinge down here. It's pin jointed and there's some force acting at the hinge to hold it in. There's some other fastener up here that's pushing in up here with a force. We're neglecting these gasket forces and we've got the pressure forces only over the area of the window that's exposed to the water. So it's a little smaller than the total dimension between the two forces because the hinge here is down below the open area. So we've got this distributed pressure force balanced by two forces on the opposite side that are coming from the mechanical assembly. So the force at the hinge plus the force at the top must be equal to the pressure force acting in the opposite direction. Double integral of pressure over area or, mathematically, knowing that the pressure doesn't change except with y, we can make that a single integral over y with pressure times w dy, which is dA. The width, 
Well, at y equals 0, it's 0 0.3, so 0 0.3, and it increases linearly with y, so it goes from 0 0.3 up to 0 0.5, so it's going to increase by 0.2 meters, going from y equals 0 up to y equals 0 0.6. So I need it to be equal to 0.2 meters when y is equal to 0 0.6, so the slope then winds up being 0.2 over 0 0.6, or one-third. The pressure depends on the height. Pressure will be rho g delta h. Now the pressure on the bottom will be 2 meters times rho g. But to get to y we're going up 0.3 meters. So 2 minus 0.3 gets us to y equals 0. And if we keep on going up in y, then the distance to the top surface keeps decreasing, so we have to subtract the y dimension as well. So that by the time we get up here to 0.6 meters above the bottom of the window, we'll be at 2 minus 0.3 minus 0.6 is 1.1 meters, which is where the top of the window is located relative to the surface. So knowing p and w, we can put those into the integral for fh plus f8 plus f. The integral will go from y equal to 0 up to y equals 0.6. It'll include rho g times 2 minus 0.3 is 1.7 minus y. That's the height here. Times the width here is 0.3 plus y over 3 that's the width, times dy. Carrying through that integral, just basic simple calculus, we need to do a little algebra, get it into a form with uh, uh, individual terms, a constant term, a y term, and a y squared term. When we integrate those, we get a y term, a y squared term, and a y cubed term, evaluated at 0 and 0 0.6. If we evaluate that, calculation, we wind up over here with fh plus f equal to 0.33 times rho g. Now does that make sense? It's obviously going to depend on the density of the water and gravity, but does this 0.33 make sense? Well let's do a test, make sure we got everything right. So first off, let's test on our pressure. p equal to rho g times 2 minus 0.3 minus y. Well, when y is equal to 0, it's 1.7 rho g. That makes sense because we're 1.7 meters under the water. When y is equal to 0.6, it's 1.1 rho g. And that makes sense because we're 1.1 meters under the water. And the pressure decreased as we went up in the vertical direction. So that's a good check. We, I think we've got this one right. Now, what about this overall number here? Well, we look at this thing, it's about half a meter by half a meter, so it's about a quarter of a square meter of window down here. So if it's a quarter square meter of window, and it's on average about a meter and a half under the water, then we ought to have about three-eighths rho g total force. That's just a rough estimate. If we look at that, 3 eighths is 0.375. Our answer is 0.33, done more exactly with the integration. So I'm feeling much more confident about this answer now. I believe in this answer for the combination of these two forces, the FH, the F, and the FH that are holding the plate on. Of course, we don't know yet how it divides between those two forces. We don't know if this one's bigger or that one's bigger or some combination. We did a force balance on F and F hinge against the pressure forces acting in this direction to determine the total combined forces as 0.33 rho g. If we want to know how it splits between the two, then we need to balance the moments. And for this instance, I'm going to choose to balance them about the pin hinge at point A. The reason I'm choosing point A is because it makes my life easier. 
FH, the hinge force, acts at point A, so it makes no contribution to the moments about point A. F at the top uh, here, on the other hand, makes quite a large contribution to the moment. It's pushing this way with a moment arm of R sub F, so the result is a counterclockwise moment about A. The pressure acts in the opposite direction, producing a clockwise moment about A. A relatively small clockwise moment down here where the moment arm is small, and a much larger contribution up here where the moment arm is large. So for each segment along the way, we're going to have to add up the moment arm separately. And that means we're going to have to do another integral over the window surface. F times R sub F, the force times the moment arm up here, must be equal to that integral of all the little moment contributions over the window. Double integral over the area of the pressure times area times the moment arm, R, the distance up from the hinge. R sub F is 0.7 meters. That's because we've got a, the hinge a little bit down below the edge of the window and the force is applied a little bit above the top of the window. So 0.05 below, 0.6 is the window width, 0.05 above is where the force is. The distance to any point on the window here can be measured in terms of y. So that r, the moment arm around the hinge, is y plus 0.05 because the y origin only starts 5 centimeters up from the hinge as we defined it in the last go. So if we take that equation there and plug in some of this, the force, the RF moment arm will come over here, must be the integral, and in this case we can use W dy as dA, just as we did before, the moment arm R, and the pressure. Previously we figured out that the pressure was rho g times 1.7 minus y, so it's higher at the bottom of the window, lower at the top of the window. The width of the window is 0.3 plus y over 3. The window gets wider as we go up. The moment arm is y plus 0.05, and multiplying all of those together in a couple of steps, we get down to here. So we've got a constant term, a y term, a y squared term, and a y cubed term, where before we only had a constant of y and a y squared term. But doing the integration is still relatively straightforward. It's still a polynomial. And we wind up with a y term squared, cubed, and y to the fourth term, which we can evaluate at 0.6 and 0. And the number we get out is 0 0.1666 rho g. If we multiply by rho g, that gives us 634 newtons. That's a fairly large force that has to be exerted up here to hold the window in place, to keep it from folding down that way on its hinge. That's the same force as about 160 kilograms of mass would weigh on Earth, so you're not going to be able to hold that just with your hand. Then FH will be 0.33 rho g minus F. 0.33 rho g was the total that we got in the, in the previous page. And that gives us 0.1634 rho g, or about 1603 newtons. Now that doesn't seem right, that these two are both about the same. If I look at the pressure variation here, the pressure is much higher at the bottom than it is up at the top. So the result is I'd expect the force at the bottom that has to hold the window in place to be larger than the force at the top. But remember, our window got wider at the top and it was narrower at the bottom. So even though the pressure was larger down here, the additional width up here meant that the pressure force here and here was about the same. Not exactly the same, but the two effects were cancelling each other out to some extent. As a result, the force required at the top of the window and the hinge force at the bottom of the window are both about the same, both about 1600 newtons.